I can give a warm welcome to Dr. Ulrike Weinrich uh, uh, from uh, the Research Institute of Automotive Engineering and Vehicle Engines in Stuttgart, short version F. KFS uh, in English, <laughs> um, uh, and you will tell us uh, um, about a, a project which uh, started last year, uh, the Rabus project. Uh, the title of your presentation: Are we ready yet? I really like that uh, uh, as an as an open question. Uh, we really had the pleasure to to uh, uh, be involved in the Rabus project from the early beginnings, the first discussions uh, with the Ministry of Transportation uh, uh, in in Baden-Württemberg and all the project partners. So, um, yeah, welcome. It's nice to have you here. Um, and I'm looking forward uh, to your presentation. Thank you, Mr. Fischer. And, um, yeah, I'm the project manager of uh, the project Rabus at the FKFS. And um, I'm going to show you um, how we to, uh, intend to bring automated driving to the streets with our project. I was stuck in traffic. How many of you have said these words once or twice before? I mean, I live in Stuttgart, and I said it quite a lot before the year 2020. Um, the facts are that um, the, tra or the time or traffic jams cost the German economy 2.8 billion euros in the year 2019. In the same year, the average greenhouse gas emissions of a passenger car were 143 uh, grams per uh, passenger kilometers. One could yeah, maybe solve this problem with emissions by replacing the internal combustion cars um, with uh, electric ones, but we would be still be stuck in traffic. In Stuttgart, the time lost in traffic jams was 42 hours in the year 2019. This is actually almost two days we spent in uh, traffic jams. Um, to solve this, one could maybe use some automated um, vehicles to do something productive while you're still stuck in traffic. But um, if we really true to ourselves, the words I was stuck in traffic really sound like the traffic jam was inflicted on us. But um, if we're really honest, isn't it true that actually we are the traffic? So that is why we um, think it is really important to see that automated driving in public transport is an opportunity. Of course, here we have some boundary conditions like um, the legal situation, like saying uh, the licensing of the shuttles, which could become a little bit easier now with the new um, laws that are actually in the making. We have liability issues and we also have some uh, issues um, say, um, consider, uh, considering the uh, data protection. Of course, we also have to look into the reliability and safety of these autonomous shuttles. And for the public transport companies, it is also important to look into the econ efficiency of these uh, kind of tra transports. Because um, as a transport company, you have to look into the um, total cost of ownership, which consists of the buying the shuttle, but also all the costs um, maintaining the shuttle throughout this lifespan. Next, um, we also have to look into the acceptance. So we have to learn and to see if passengers are really, or if people are willing to use this kind of shuttle and this new technology. And, and lastly, uh, we also have to look into the transferability. So we can't only, or we want to use these kind of shuttles in certain areas and cities and so on. So this, this is why we came up with the project RABUS. RABUS stands for the Real Laboratory for Automated Bus Operation in Urban and Rural Public Transportation. Here in RABUS, we have two real laboratories for the electric, um, automated and connected bus operation and public transport applications. We, this is a consortium, a consortium consisting of six partners from research and science, public transport operators, but also the industry. The project is uh, publicly funded by the Ministry of Transport. And here you can see Minister Hermann when he handed the um, approval of our grant to Professor Reuss from the FKFS. Real laboratories, just to give you a quick insight, um, this is actually a nice setup because here you can test new functions, new features, 
your autonomous, autonomous system and um, you have an enclosed environment and for a limited um, set of time you also can um, get some uh, exemptions from existing laws where, so that you can actually test your system and if it works under these new circumstances. Um, one of our real laboratories is in Friedrichshafen and here we're going to look into the urban and the rural application, which means we also look into the um, mixed traffic on the, um, on the roads, which means the shuttle doesn't have its own lane, but it has to drive with all the other cars and bicycles and so on on the open road. In uh, Friedrichshafen, we look closely into a cross-section of traffic and um, requirements, which means we, ha we have um, 30 km per hour zones, but we also have p country roads with speed limits up to 60 or 70 uh, kilometers per hour. The operation in Friedrichshafen of the shuttles will start in 2023. And, um, on the other hand, we have Mannheim. In Mannheim, we develop a new residential area, which is called Franklin, and it used to be a military base, and now it is converted into this new residential area with up to 10,000 inhabitants. Here in Mannheim, we're gonna look closer into the driverless operation, which means that the safety steward who is in the shuttle, of course, in Friedrichshafen and in Mannheim at the beginning of the project. But in Mannheim, we're going to try to take him out of the shuttle and put the um, uh, operator into a technical supervision, which is going to be set up in the control center of, in the end, the public transport um, companies. In the end of the project, we also want to look into a, a concessionary line um, operation, which means the passengers also have to pay for this kind of shuttle service, or we ask them what they're willing to pay for this kind of service. In Mannheim, we're going to start with the operation the next year, in 2022. The shuttles are the group rapid transit shuttles from the company to get there, which is a 100% subsidiary of uh, ZF. Here I'm going to just go quickly over some facts. Um, the shuttle has a capacity for 22 passengers, which means we have um, eight uh, seats and uh, play, or the space for 14 standing people. And the shuttle can charge from 30 to 80% in 10 minutes. Of course, um, because we are a research project, we also do some really nice scientific monitoring. On the one hand, we are going to look into the acceptance, which means we are going to do some questionnaires with all the passengers and users and non-users. And we are going to ask them what um, their reasons are to use the shuttle or maybe why they, why they are hesitant and how we can overcome this fear against um, uh, these kind of shuttles. On the other hand, we also do some traffic evaluations, which means we're going to take the data from the operation of the shuttle, um, feed them into some um, models um, from, from the operation, and then we're going to transfer these findings into other areas as well, so that we can actually see if um, the bus shuttle operation from Friedrichshafen and Mannheim also works for cities like Hanover or Stuttgart as well. At last, we're also going to do some uh, technical monitoring, which means we're going to look into the localization of the shuttle. So we're going to see if um, how robust it is and how reliable. And also we're going to see um, or going to look into the obstacle detection, like um, other bicycles, other cars or, or people on the street as well. Um, this is why we think um, Rabus has some really good, um, quite nice added values from different point of views um, of users and um, people involved in this kind of project. Uh, on the one hand, we have the population who gets a safe and comfortable shuttle service and also can expect um, an expansion of the public transport services for the rural areas as well. For the politics, um, with the goal of the transport turnaround by 2030, um, Ravos gives some really good experience regarding the operation of automated um, driving or automated autonomous shuttles in the public transport uh, section.
For the transport companies, we're going to closely look into the economic um, operation of these kind of shuttles and um, we're going to see if there are even some more or some new possibilities to use these shuttles, like for instance the 24 7 service or the last mile connection as well. For the science, we're going to look or we're going to see how the acceptance and the motives of uh, people and the passengers um, is towards these kind of shuttles and how we can help them overcome the fear and what, what they need, uh, what kind of assistance they need. Um, moreover, um, from learning how the car turns around the corner, how it stops, these objectives really gives us, objective data gives us um, a kind of um, reasons why of feeling for the passenger's sa sense of safety and what, when, when he feels safe on the shuttle and what kind of uh, behavior um, doesn't feel safe anymore. For the industrial companies involved, um, we're going to improve the reliability and safety of these kind of um, shuttles and um, autonomous systems. And we're going to help safeguarding the functional safety of uh, these systems as well. In the end, um, I'd like to show you how the project Rabus um, fits nicely or is a nice addition to the project portfolio at the University of Stuttgart and the FKFS. Um, together with the project Ameise, which is another publicly funded project by the Ministry of Transport, um, where the university is involved, we're going to um, set up these or we have these real laboratories. Um, on the other hand, we also see these vehicle concepts uh, like uh, the project Unica Agil, where the University of Stuttgart is involved, where um, a disruptive modular platform for hardware and software is developed. The project U-Shift, uh, which Ms. Uh, Professor Siefkes already explained to us, where you can take the, yeah, the transport module uh, or you separate the transport module, module from the transport uh, from the capsule and the project uh, Flexcar, um, which is a joint project at the Arena 2036, um, where also another platform for the vehicle of the future is uh, developed. On the other hand, um, we also have mobility concepts like the Mobility Living Lab on, or so-called MobiLab at the campus of uh, University of Stuttgart where, um, or with the plan of the university to have an emission-free campus by 2035, um, the idea is to take um, all the cars or vehicles out of the campus, so the campus Fying is going to be car free by that time and in order to access the campus then you're going to have to use um, public transport uh, or bike, local bike um, shares or if you're really dependent on your um, vehicle you have to park your car outside in the parking lot and to, in order to access the campus you have to use an autonomous shuttle as well. So. Um, i like to thank you for your attention. Um, I hope I'm going to see you in the next couple of years in one of our real laboratories in uh, Friedrichshafen or Mannheim. And um, if, you, if you like, stay connected, connected with us through our website as well. Thank you. So, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ulrike, We Ulrike Weinrich uh, from the FKFS. Um, yeah, as we have uh, one minute left, uh, just uh, w one question. Uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if, if you really have an answer to, to that right now, as uh, Rabus is in a really early stage. But yes. uh, if you look at the public transport, uh, yes. so uh, this could be more really like an evolutionary way just to, to, to uh, have um, yeah, some new possibilities with the new vehicles, mm. or, or will it be really be a revolution of the, of, the, of the public transport, as these shuttles are really a complete new mode in, in the whole 
yes. uh, intermodal system. What's your, your uh, opinion about um, that? We see Rabos or the findings from, of Rabos as an addition for the public transport. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to replace anything that's here yet, but we want to expand um, yeah, new denser lines or even the, the more shuttle services or for even other times which aren't really economic at the moment. So. Mm -hmm. So it brings more uh, possibilities for the users. That's, uh, yes. I think that's a point in, in a real laboratory. Um. Yes, but, but even for the public transport as oh. well, because uh, at the moment, um, if, if we can't find any drivers or um, for certain routes, um, you have to you have to cancel them and now we're going to give them the opportunity to, yeah, to expand the services again. And especially in, uh, uh, in, in yeah, some late night or, or especially time frames uh, where it's not really uh, uh, attractive uh, yes. to be a bus driver. So this could be a really good uh, uh, possibility. So thank you much uh, uh, for your interesting presentation. I'm look, really looking forward to the Rabus project uh, in, the, in the following mm -hmm. years. Um, so uh, uh, thank you for this uh, 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 time.